There you go. John Galloway. Uh, and my main area of interest is technology and special educational needs and how uh, technology can improve learning, curriculum access, school experiences for children with special needs. Uh, and one of my one of the main reasons for doing that is technology can literally change lives. The, one of the most famous examples of that would be Stephen Hawking. Uh, can you imagine you know, how much harder, I mean, life would be hard for Stephen Hawking, but how much harder if he wasn't able to communicate through the technology he has. It is his voice. We know what he thinks uh, and what he writes because of his technology. Somebody who is blind may be able to use a screen because they have a screen reader. Uh, somebody, a, a young girl I was working with yesterday, a year four child, has hypermobility. So she finds it very hard to handwrite for long periods. So what she does instead is to type. But sometimes uh, typing becomes tiring as well. She's using Google Docs, so she uses the uh, voice typing tool in Google Docs. Yeah? Now, that's meant that she has gone from writing very cramped few lines of text to producing text that's on a par with everybody else in her class. Yeah? Now, that voice typing is something that isn't particularly specialist in the sense that it's sitting there for every single one of us to use. Yeah? Google Docs, voice typing, there it is. And it's a good example of how what was once very specialist has now become generic. Every one of us uses um, touch screens all the time. Yeah? Most of us probably use our voice to control our computer or to, to, to do um, voice searches. Yeah? So within our technology, there is built into it ways of making life easier for those who have special educational needs and disabilities. Uh, on this Mac, it's sitting here under accessibility. Yeah? In the system preferences, accessibility. And the things it would let us do would be things like invert colours. So if you have a visual impairment, you can go from black on white to white on black, and you have high contrast, and it makes it easier to see. Uh, it would allow us to zoom in so that we can isolate a part of the, keyboard, the, um, uh, the, the screen or we can enlarge the whole screen. Voice over would give us a speech to text, sorry, text to speech, um, but it will also read out the commands, the windows you've opened, the, con the, the commands you've just hit on the keyboard and so on. Um, on the keyboard, we can use things like sticky keys, which means that if you uh, have a, uh, it, you can use, use the keyboard one-handed. So instead of doing control, alt, delete with two hands, you do control, alt, delete. Yep, you can do it one-handed. Then we've got um, slow keys. So if you perhaps uh, have a tremor and find it hard to get your hand off or onto the keyboard, it will change the response rate of the keyboard. Um, and we've got dictation. So uh, as we all know with, say, Siri, you can talk to your computer. It does what you says. But it's also got built-in text, speech to text. And it's sitting there. Windows has a similar system. It's not quite as good but it's sitting there in the operating system of the machines we regularly use. Every operating system on every device has accessibility tools built into it. Now, I started this entitled A Reminder, and I hope that's what it is, yeah? Because it's there. And you will all be working with people who can benefit from those tools. So hopefully, this is just a prompt to say, it's there, have a look, use it. Thank you.